Hello and welcome to another podcast episode from Animal Training Academy. I'm your host Ryan Cartledge and today I'm excited because we are going to be doing something a little bit new and also talking about training a species which you might say has not traditionally been one that people have invested time in training. Firstly, this new podcast idea is going to be called Meet a Member. Animal Training Academy is growing daily. What I mean is that every day more people are joining the email list or registering on the website or downloading the podcasts. It's really exciting how every single day the Academy just gets that little bit bigger, even by one person. For me sitting at home here in New Zealand, it's an exhilarating journey as I have this ever increasing connection with literally a world of animal trainers. And I love receiving messages from you and seeing what you're up to. Earlier this year in March, a message from one Johnny May caught my eye. Johnny told me that he'd recently attended the Regional Aquatics Conference or RAW Conference at the Audubon Aquarium and Insectarium, New Orleans, Louisiana, USA. And he mentioned there was a lot of talk about training elasma branches, a group of cartilaginous fish, including sharks and ray. And he felt that people were still a little skeptical about this, whether it was even possible. And this contrasted with his view that this was more an area for discovery and advancement, especially because he had personally been having success target training a species of fish called a white sturgeon, a fish I know very little about, but from my limited understanding can reach sizes of 20 feet or six meters. So pretty impressive. Johnny then sent me some videos of his training which are included in the write-up for this podcast and that's when I was really excited about sharing what he was up to as Johnny and his white sturgeon provide a really nice example of the universality of the beautiful science of positive reinforcement. So we're going to say hello to Johnny really shortly but first just a little bit of information about him and his background. He began his work at his local zoo in 2008 as a seasonal keeper moving around from facility to facility working interning and volunteering at a number of zoos sanctuaries veterinary clinics aquariums and wildlife rehabilitation centers. In 2013, Johnny graduated from the Mississippi State University with a degree in animal and dairy science with a focus on the veterinary side of things. And he is currently working towards a master's in business administration from the University of Memphis. Johnny is also about to embark upon an exciting new role within a fish and invert team as a senior biologist at a brand new aquarium currently under construction, but opening very soon. During his time at one of the zoo hospitals he was volunteering at, Johnny witness the benefits of training animals to voluntarily participate in their own routine health exams. It was these experiences that inspired him to attempt training what some might consider non-traditional species. And it's that consideration which excited me. It makes me really glad about sharing Johnny and his white sturgeon success story. Without further ado, a very good morning from New Zealand to you, Johnny. How are you? I am doing well, Ryan. Thanks so much for having me. No, it's at my absolute pleasure. And how's everything in, in Memphis, Tennessee? It's so cool to be able to utilize this technology and sit in my spare bedroom in New Zealand and talk to you kind of in, in central southwestern US say that's right isn't it yeah i'm actually i guess it'd be the south technically but it's about three in the afternoon here but it's nice and sunny and we're i guess 17 hours behind you that's correct yeah so your day you kind of in the past (laughs) (laughs) yes hey let's let's dive straight in this morning johnny I've given a very quick introduction to you and some of the stuff you've been up to. Maybe before we talk specifically about your white sturgeon training, can you maybe tell the audience a little bit more about where you first learned about positive reinforcement and the first animal or animals you ever trained using it? Yeah, absolutely. So I think I was unknowingly introduced to positive reinforcement at a very young age. Around the age of four, my dad got me my first dog. He was a yellow lab named Barney after the TV show. And every day after work, my dad would come home and work with Barney on a bunch of different behaviors such as, you know, sit, shake, stay. He knew different directions. You could point or give him a verbal cue. And it was from those experiences I learned kind of the basics of positive reinforcement. So for example, sometimes, you know, Barney wouldn't understand exactly what we were asking him. And we would either go on to another behavior and then come back to it. And it was those experiences that were my beginnings and understanding positive reinforcement enforcement and working with animals. The first animal I think I could say that I personally fully trained was a bull reticulated giraffe named Kenya. When I first met Kenya, I realized that he was very outgoing and he had a very, very strong appetite. And so after reading a little bit more about certain training successes other zoos had had with their giraffes, I came across an article that some of the keepers at the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo had written. And it went through this program that they used to kind of 
train every giraffe in their herd for voluntary radiographs and other medical procedures. And so I used that article and modified it to kind of fit our facilities and then Kenya. And eventually I got it to the point where Kenya would place his front hoof on this wooden platform my assistant curator had built. And he would actually alternate depending on which one you told him. So it was really, really interesting to see how quickly it caught on. And it was all done through positive reinforcement training. So dogs to giraffe, to white sturgeon. <laughs> nice transitions. <laughs> and and nice generalizing of the science between species. Maybe now though, Johnny, let's talk about, it's really nice hearing about Barney and, and Kenya. Let's talk a little bit about your experience training fish and the videos of you target training the white sturgeon. Does the white sturgeon, you got four of them, correct? Right. Well, we actually have four in the exhibit that I'm training in and then another very large one and another display where we do a lot of our dive shows. Right. And so the ones you're working with, of, should, should I just refer to them as the white sturgeons or have they got specific names? Well, I have names for them, but in general, <laughs> we just call them the white sturgeon. What, what so. are your names for them, Johnny? Well, we have the one in the video, which is the big white, which is the biggest of all four of them. And then the other one is big or dark blue, depending on who you talk to. We all kind of have our own names for them. But <laughs> So we'll refer to the white sturgeon as, as big white today. Right, big white or great white, whichever you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we're going to be uh, talking about your experience training fish in the videos of you target training big white, um, which I'm going to share via the write-up for this podcast. Can you maybe dive a little bit deeper into your experience surrounding fish training and training big white? Of course. So I started training fish when I became an aquarist at Bass Pro Shops. Bass Pro operates about 170 live exhibits across their stores in the US and Canada. And one of the things they do with most of their fish, because they have have these very large tanks which house a lot of predatory species such as blue cats, alligator gar, and white sturgeon. They actually have to target train all of these animals so that we can ensure they get the appropriate diet. And not only that, but it helps reduce some of the predation on other species in the tank. So once I arrived at Bass Pro, I noticed we had four white sturgeon in this 174,000 gallon exhibit. And at that time, because we were opening the facility, there wasn't much time for training. But when we started out, our team was diving that exhibit about two to three times a week for maintenance purposes purposes and why we were in there, we would go ahead and feed these four white sturgeon. And it was kind of necessary because even though they're the biggest animals in that exhibit, they're a lot slower than our other fish. So in order to make sure they got their weekly ration, hand feeding them was absolutely necessary. And that exhibit is very, very cold. So that was one of the reasons I wanted to eventually train these animals to come to the side of the exhibit so we didn't have to dive in every time we had to feed them. But I also had seen some other people have some success with other aquatic species. And I thought it'd be really interesting to do it with sturgeon because I hadn't been able to find anybody that had worked with them in the way that I would like to do. And so when I first started out, I was diving in the tank. I would scuba dive and I had this bottle of rocks. Um, I started out with that because it is a very large exhibit. And I thought that if I had some kind of auditory or some kind of cue that could kind of call them over to me, that would be the easiest way to train them. And then unfortunately, I realized after about a few weeks shaking this bottle of gravel underwater, I felt that they were associating the diver more with food and less so the vibrations or the sound or whatever was causing them to react to this bottle shaking underwater. And so that's when we moved on to target training, which you can see the large orange target that I use in the videos. And after I got them targeting, I began trying to do other things such as the stretcher, which you can see in the videos. And my reasoning for training them to swim over the stretcher is because these fish are already very, very big. Our biggest one when we moved them in was around 120 pounds and she's grown a lot since then. And they have, like Ryan was saying earlier, the potential to get very, very big. Biggest ones they've ever caught in the wild have been over 1,500 pounds in weight and over 20 feet in length, which is about six meters. So ours will probably never get near that big, but I could easily see them doubling in size, which would, you know, be almost twice the size of most of our aquarists. And so from the targeting, which I'm sure many people are familiar with, I used that to get the fish to swim towards the, the um, stretcher, which was laid flat on the bottom. And you can see in one of the videos, she actually actually swims, follows the target all the way up to the stretcher, then she gets to it and turns. And so I actually had to come back and call her back to target next to it. And then I rewarded her and then we started over again. So it's kind of taking little tiny steps to eventually get her comfortable with swimming over just a portion of the stretcher and finally aligning up and swimming over the entire thing so that she could be eventually, hopefully, even lifted if she ever needed to be treated for any kind of medical procedure or moved to another exhibit. Yeah, perfect. And so you, you highlighted for me a number of really important things there 
there for anyone that works in an aquarium and anyone that manages an aquarium with regards to creating cooperative behaviors between you and this animal that facilitate its daily husbandry procedure and its daily husbandry routine and eventually down the track possible medical reasons if you're going to need to get it into a stretcher if you need to move the animal you can get it into a stretcher so the, the other and then tell me what you think johnny important aspect of this kind of training for the aquarium for bass pro and for any aquarium moving forward is it's going to save time and money in the future isn't it if you can perform these procedures quickly and cooperatively with these animals yeah absolutely you know i mean these animals are very very big and even when you're diving with them although the surgeon are really friendly if they get spooked by the bubbles i've personally had one of them kind of whack me in the head with their tail and they're big animals and right now with that one that's 120 pounds it's not big enough to do damage but you can imagine how that feels getting hit by that animal while you're underwater and as it continues to grow just having the animal kind of assist in any kind of husbandry or health needs i think would be beneficial no matter what you're working on yeah and you mentioned earlier that you trained it via the same principles as any other animal and that, and that's an important point to take away here as we move through this period uh, in 2016 with animal training moving into the next 10 20 years the principles that you, you use with kenya the giraffe and the principles that you use with barney the dog are the same principles that you use with big white is that right yeah absolutely at all the basics i feel kind of apply to all species and then you kind of just adjust it to the individual fantastic i love the way you articulated that you adjust it to the individual super important hey johnny thanks for sharing that and i'm super stoked that you exist and you're pushing the boundaries and doing novel things as i mentioned towards the start of the podcast fish training is an area that you think is possibly in its infancy and has space for a lot of growth and development and i 100 agree with you personally i want to see more of what you're doing moving forward johnny maybe do you want to just add some commentary about what you would like to see happen with animal training specifically with aquarium training in the next 5 10 20 years yeah ryan so like you were saying a lot of people have done some really cool stuff with sharks and rays and what i do with the sturgeon isn't necessarily that i guess groundbreaking but it is just another example of a species that i feel hasn't been well represented when it comes to training and i hope that'll help kind of push the limit and encourage other people to try new things with other animals that they thought maybe were not as trainable as others i also feel like with the aquarium a lot of times in my experience at least a lot of people don't realize that fish are capable of being trained in these ways similar to how they might train their pets at home and i feel like that's a great way to connect our guests with these animals sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to connect a person with a fish when you compare it to making that connection with a mammal or a bird also i just i think it's a really good way to help display some of their natural behaviors that you might not normally see in an aquarium where they just are sitting there or swimming around it's a really good way to again help help educate your guests and make that connection yeah i i think the points you bring up there are really valid and really great uh, i agree with everything you've just said and and who knows maybe this podcast will bring some other white sturgeon trainers out of the woodworks <laughs> if you if you're listening to this we would love to hear from you, you know, let us know that what would you're up be to great <laughs> hey hey johnny thank you so much for for coming on the show today and sharing your experience. I, I love your videos. And as mentioned, they are going to be available in the podcast right up for, for everyone to watch and enjoy. For everyone listening, if this is your first time engaging with an Animal Training Academy podcast, make sure to visit www.animaltrainingacademy.com and you can see, download and listen to all other episodes there. Also, we are very close to Animal Training Academy's one year birthday. It was on the 11th of July, 2015 that I released my first online course the recipe for successful behavior management of animals in your care. And so next week, I'm going to make an announcement as I plan to do something really cool and exciting for Animal Training Academy's one year birthday celebration, which I'm super pumped about. The best way to stay informed about this is via the email list, which you can join by visiting the website www.animaltrainingacademy.com and, and hitting the register button there, where you will be added to the list. And as an added bonus, just to say thank you, you will receive the 15 lesson Animal Training Tidbits online course for free as my labor of love and show of appreciation to you for supporting this venture. As always, as always, as always, as always, I would love to hear from you. Please leave a comment on the podcast right up. Send me a message if you're doing some cool training. Send me some videos. I would love to see what you're up to and even share your story on a Meet a Member podcast, especially if you're training something really unique. One of my missions here at Animal Training Academy is to demonstrate the universality of these animal training principles. They work with all species in all situations. So send me your messages. Tell me if you like this podcast.
this podcast or if you didn't just send me a message to say anything i just love hearing from you it's been an absolute pleasure johnny thank you so much for coming on the show really appreciate it and really enjoyed learning about your white sturgeons and what you're up to there thank you so much ryan it's been great and for everyone out there in podcast land thank you for joining us and you'll hear from me again soon cheers